thing from your Mac computer sampled. Anything that comes out of your computer speakers you could have as an MP3 file in a music program. I'm doing this for my Soundtrap series or just an MP3 file. If you want a file from YouTube, if you want audio from YouTube, the quickest, best way to do this is always to go copy the link for the YouTube video you want the audio from, go to youtube.mp3.com, paste that URL in there and download it from there. I know a buddy who works at WKQX Chicago, and he's like, yeah, they have this fancy equipment. They have anything you could ever want for audio. And we go to YouTube to MP3 hundreds of times a day. It's like, th that is what people are using. It's nothing fancy. Go to YouTube to MP3 if you want something quick. But if you want a small section of audio, it's not from YouTube, or you just want to have a faster way of doing this for like music production and things like that, and you're on a Mac, this is the video for you. It's very, very cool how this stuff works. And let's get into it. How this will work is as follows. What we're trying to do is tell our computer, hey, instead of outputting to our internal microphone or our internal speakers or headphones, I'll put to this device. I'll put to some other place that we have control over. And then we're also simultaneously telling Soundtrap, hey, input our sound as a microphone from this controlled source. Don't take in from our computer's internal mic or any mic that we have plugged in, take from this specific thing. And what the program does is download a place where you could set these two places as the same thing. And that is called Soundflower. Downloading Soundflower isn't as easy. What we're gonna have to do, and what I'm gonna have to tell you in this video, unfortunately, is go to Google right now and just type in download Soundflower. It's always gonna be for free. Don't have anybody make you pay for it. Don't put your email anywhere. There's a bit of ununiformity when it comes to downloading this. It's not one company that downloads Soundflower anymore. It's spread out. I've downloaded Soundflower about three times on three different computers for the past couple of years with all different security settings. And I've always been able to find one that passes every single virus scan that I've had. It's a little bit of a safety issue though. I'm not recommending that you do any specific one. It will change. And the best option right now is to go over to Google and just type in download Soundflower, download the DMG file for free. Don't download any other programs and you should have it straight. Great. That's how this company is. It's an open source technology that is free to use. So go over to Google, download that, and then once you've done that, restart your Mac, which is a big one. Make sure that you have something that uh, you restart your system before you come back because that aggravated me when I first would download it sometimes. And once you're done with that, let's go straight into the program to figure out how to use it. Okay, so now that you have Soundflower installed, maybe you've restarted your Mac just to make sure everything is good. First thing that I want you to do is go into your spotlight and type in sound. You could do it through system preferences as well. Click on this little icon. Click the button down here that says show volume in menu bar. That'll be unchecked. Check it right here. Once you have that, what it's going to do is pop up this little icon in the top of your screen for this little speaker in your sound settings. Because you have Soundflower now, you are going to get very comfortable with switching your computer's output settings. And notice that two options will appear down here that weren't there before. We're gonna start by clicking the output of Soundflower right here. What that is doing is having your computer say output to the Soundflower device. Now that we have that, we could open up Sound, we could open up Soundtrap and straight up go into our microphone settings and scroll through our inputs. It'll probably say internal mic to default and then click our Soundflower thing. Now that we have that going, the computer won't output anything. You actually won't hear anything. So it'll sound a little bit weird right now, but that is part of the process. We have our microphone and then I queued up a YouTube video right here. If I just wanted a small section, I'm gonna take this uh, Jacob Collier a little bit and take a few seconds from his clip. Start over in Soundflower in the Soundtrap program with our Soundflower enabled on this mic. Make sure record is enabled right there on this little red thing. After that's done, I simply start recording. Wait for the kickoff to start. That's going, going strong. Go back over to my YouTube video. Play a couple seconds of that. It's going a little bit slowly because my computer's running hot. But I know that there's no sound coming out of there right now, and that's normal. That's a few seconds, pretty good. Go back over to Soundflower. Perfect, straight from the source, we have in here our uh, audio clip. Now, you can't hear anything in this audio clip. If I play that back, 
I can't hear anything right now. What I'm doing is recording from a multi-output device, so I am going to go back into my typical uh, speakers. You could press internal mic or you could press whatever is normal headphones or something like that to hear back. Perfect. Now we're hearing our sound and that is pretty much how you do it. Before this video ends, I want to give a little thing right here that if you guys are sampling in Soundtrap, and you have something that's like rhythmic or you have patterns that you're trying to sample if the audio you're trying to get is like a riff or a four second drum beat or something like that it won't link to the tempo of your track in soundtrap this is coming from a guy who loves soundtrap so much it's impossible to get something rhythmic in soundtrap if you have something non-rhythmic where you would create the rhythm like you have one drum hit or you have one bass note sampled or speech or something like that that you're putting into any rhythm in your beat already that is the good things that you could do sampling in soundtrap and it's very easy to do stuff like that but if you have like a rhythm that you want to have like a like i said a four second drum beat or you know like a 808 pattern or something like that there's no way to do it in Soundtrap, and there is a way to do it for free with another computer program called Audacity that a lot of people are using. It's an industry standard thing. Leave a comment down below if you want that to get uh, rhythmic samples available in Soundtrap, but just you know free, but through another place. I don't think there's too much of a demand for it right now, but leave it in the comments below if there is, because I'll totally make that video. And you know, I'm small channel right now at the time of recording and i get back to that so if there's a demand for that i'm totally going to make that video so check that out if that's what you want but for now i have a free sample pack down below by the way if you're just doing those one shot not non-rhythmic samples of drum hits and some bass sounds and things like that that's in the description it's 50 free samples i'm not trying to get anything out of you with it there's no signing up with your email or free trial any of that i'm just there's a bunch of audio files in a zip file that i put on google drive that you could download for free right now that's down there go check that out it'll always be for free and uh that'll get all the drum samples that you have right now before i go also um this series of soundtrack videos is part of one main video which is making a whole song in soundtrack where i use every single technique sampling recording vocals bass everything that i do go check that out right now and that's pretty much it guys um like i said leave a comment down below if i missed anything else also uh i get back to those like pretty easily because i'm small as well so thank you guys for doing that stuff and i'll see you in the next one